Oh, all right. Okay. I I did hear that um, Dennis Vandal isn't able to come tonight to the meeting. He's uh, has a previous engagement, and um, Karen Helfer also sent me a message saying that she was had to be attending some special thing for the graduation. Okay. So she won't be at the meeting. So hmm. two people will be missing. Okay. Is your sound okay, Terry? Yeah. Can you uh, hear me? We can. Excellent. Let's hope it stays that way. Hi, Chad. I know. I called them and they checked on it, but you no, know, we had a thunderstorm that night, so I think that's why I lost it, but I'm not mm. sure. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm sure Christina will be here, and mm -hmm. Mila was planning to attend, so that'll be good. And our quorum is, will be met when they arrive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I left the Hadley Senior Center this afternoon, one of the thermometers said 87. <laughs> oh, come on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll bet you thought you were in Miami. It's not that hot here. I, I think our thermometer says 76. Oh, OK. So, OK. But it feels really nice out. It feels good to have the door open. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, I don't know what just happened. What? Uh, nothing. I just heard beeps, but I I, I disappeared. Oh, you're there for us. Yeah, I can. You can see me. I can. Uh -huh. see. Yep. You have a nice bright yellow sweater on. Whoops. She just, just oh, yeah, now we lost her. Uh, oh, Greg. Hey, Greg. Hi, Greg. <laughs> Here she comes back. There you are. You came back. And we did lose you for a minute. How was the open house yesterday? Oh, oh it was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, I was going to talk about that a little bit. Terry, I missed you. I saw that you had signed up to come and I looked for you, but I didn't see you. Next year. Yeah, because yeah, I have breathing issues and there was going to be too many people. I just didn't want to chance it. Oh, okay. And there were a lot of people. Yep. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah. mention a little bit about it because um, I, yeah. <clears throat> I think, well, of course, I did see Chad and Christina there, too. So that was really nice. Oh, OK. Oh, and Greg was there. We saw and, him. And Greg Brought was there. Yeah. The dog. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to say something about it, Haley, go ahead. Sure. Oh, I would love to. Um, I was going to talk about this uh, on the director's update. So we had about oh, 65 okay. to 70 people, which was a wonderful attendance. Wow. Um, yeah. I, you know, I think only wow. 35 people had RSVP'd, so to get more was excellent. Um, we had really nice coverage from the Gazette, Amherst Media, uh, WWLP stopped by even, and they took some fan fantastic shots. Um, I heard just really high praise from everybody in attendance. The band was great. The food was good. So a shout out to um, Cress and Earl Miller for picking up that tab. Um, and we had lots of wonderful donors, great volunteer team. They made it look effortless. Mm. It was perfect. It really was. It was so much fun. People really had a good time and they mm -hmm. had good energy. They were happy and positive. It was really um, the band was just right because yep. it kind of, you could hear it when you were in any of the rooms, mm -hmm. but it wasn't dominating. Mm -hmm. It was just right. Really nice. Oh, good. So, so Haley decided we need one every year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. We definitely do. Um, I think that'll be a good move. And we got some good program ideas. People want dance classes. They want ping pong. They want a pool table. 
movies, musical events. Um, so some really fantastic suggestions by yeah. people. So you got input right there on site. That's oh, yeah. good. That's good. Chad, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, um, I wanted to see the uh, open house have a uh, specific purpose, such as um, accomplish, uh, you know, either the board or yourself giving a presentation about accomplishments this year, future direction, a, a type of lecture, um, whether it be 10 minute or whatever at some point. Um, to um, engage the citizens of the town in the um, senior center more than just a celebration. Um, mm. For instance, I didn't know what to do there, um, but I was tapped on the shoulder to give a tour. Okay. Um, <laughs> obviously, I did what uh, this board is interested in, which is um, say that um, the space has been shrinking, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm ideas about a senior center, um, you know, some of the programs on grounds and so on. But I did that by going floor to floor and pointing out um, where the exercise equipment was going to go and mm -hmm. those sort of things. So anyway, I, I think it would be great if we had it, if, if it was once a year, twice a year, whatever. Um, this yeah. is what's been happening, some type of presentation. Whether it's great. only 10 minutes or yeah, whatever. Okay. I, think I see that as a good suggestion. I think mm. you would have to say open house from one to three with a special presentation at two o'clock, let's say. Oh, right. yeah, we could do that. I'd also, I think when we do it again, we should have our, our own table for the council and we should have some, you know, some volunteers who are able to give those tours and, um, you know, because that kind of makes it more of the, the open house feel where we want to showcase all that we have to offer. Um, so that's a great suggestion. Good idea. Okay. And okay. piggybacking you, Chad, um, I'm thinking that maybe some uh, special day or holiday in order to continue mm. to get more support for the new place that we we know is imminent. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and and to, yeah, yeah, and to use that to get the word out rather than relying wholly on the media. We, we need the media, but to do it in conjunction with the media, I think would be a good idea. Isn't this senior month? That sounds good to me. I think it is senior month. So yeah. I wouldn't have it further down in the schedule. I'd have it as an opening. I'd have it at the beginning, at the front end where- Oh, okay. We could gather the people, get their attention, um, kick off the open house that way where they would mm. have, we would have their listening ear, so to speak. Mm. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. yeah. Okay, let me call the meeting to order. <laughs> we'll talk more about the, the open house as we as we go on. Um, I, we do have a quorum. So um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation and the meeting is being recorded. I'll do a roll call uh, officially. Uh, Greg Bascom. <laughs> you're on mute. I, unmute, Greg, so we make sure your, your sound is okay. Unmute. Oh. Hmm. Here. Awesome. He, can't he, hear him. He did, yeah. but we still don't hear him. Can't hear you. Hmm. Can. Greg, can you hear us? He's on yep. mute. Put your hand up if you can hear us. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, he's here. Uh, Chad right. Fuller. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Chad is here. He put his hand up. Um, Karen Helfer. Mila Montemayor. Christina Sharbai, uh, Terry Carr, here. Um, Jacqueline Smith Crooks, here. And Dennis Vanbo. Okay.
anyone in the public would like to make a comment at this time, you have three minutes. If so, raise your hand. Okay, no comment. Let's move on. We got started with talking about the open house and Haley is first on the agenda. So if we wanna finish that conversation, let's do so now. Sure. Um, so, so yeah, so just a recap for anybody who hadn't um, heard about 65 to 70 people, which was a fantastic turnout. We had, you know, beautiful weather, um, lovely band, food um, provided for by the Crest Department. Um, we've got some really great ideas on programs that we can do in the future, some of which we can actually enact, um, you know, quicker than others. You know, I think one person had asked for exercise machines. Well, that that won't happen, you know, within the next six months or so, but certainly dance classes can take place now. Uh, we really, I think, did a fantastic job of getting the word out. You know, we had, again, fantastic media presence by the Gazette, Amherst Media, WWLP. Um, we were lucky enough to have Mindy Dom and many of our town counselors and the town manager in attendance. So I think we did a good job of kind of showing people that we, we are here, we're open um, and reminding them of all the different programs and services we have to offer. This will definitely become an annual event and I think we can have a stronger COA and friends presence. Um, I'd like to see a bit more um, from the friends of the Amherst Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if people have any questions about that day or any other comments? Um, you mentioned that we were on W W L P. Mm -hmm. Was there? Did they? I haven't seen it yet. Um, I've been checking their website, but they yeah. did interview us, and they took some really fantastic shots in in room one hundred and one and of the music. Um, so I would think maybe today or tomorrow that'll be um, airing. Is that um, is that the um, eight twenty two station or? I, I don't get cable. Oh, oh, oh but that okay. is our more local uh, network. Okay, all right. Well, if you get that program, if you get it. Oh yeah, that's going up on Facebook as soon as I get the link. So, okay. and I'll email everybody. Perfect, okay, very good. Yeah, I have to say it was a very happy event. People were really having a good time. They were, and they were, and which is exactly what we wanted to see. Um, and people were surprised at some of the new programs. I signed one woman up to get her nails done on May 25th. So people were yeah. excited that we're offering different sorts of programs now. And how about the um, raffle tickets? Did you, ra did you find, did people win? We uh, did, yep, we, uh, people won. Uh, we made a series of calls today. Um, yeah, we didn't have as many tickets as I would have thought, but you know, it was just a, a fun thing for people to do to make it a little icing on the cake. Yeah, I thought it was fun. And, and people were anxious to fill them out and, and oh, yeah. put on the drawing. So that was fun, yeah. So, so other things on my agenda, so I, I did a couple um, report searches in my senior center, found out that in April 2022, we served about 965 seniors. So that's a combination of people attending a class or picking up medical loan equipment, um, or just even walking in and getting some information or a referral to a program. Um, now I'll have to do some number crunches kind of looking before the pandemic to get a real sense of what the comparison is. Um, but I can tell you that about, we're serving about 30 people a day. And we had a, we had a meeting in Hadley this afternoon and where I learned that the Hadley Senior Center serves 75 people a day. Mm -hmm. And many of those people are Amherst residents. Uh, so to me, that's pretty striking. You know, we definitely wanna be doing better. We wanna be doing more outreach. Um, and one thing I would really like to see us do is to form a subcommittee for outreach, for senior outreach, and kind of talk about how can we get people engaged? How can we get them interested, um, you know, clamoring to come to the senior center and to get those services that they need? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm quite surprised that it's only 30 people per mm -hmm. day. Yeah. But on the other hand, um, they have a senior center. Hmm. They had a pretty strong following because mm -hmm. of their new building. Yes. And I think that up their numbers mm -hmm. and then COVID probably didn't hurt them as much as it did us. That would be my intuition um, mm -hmm. as well. And I can certainly, um, I'd like to do some senior center tours, maybe talk with the directors about attendance numbers and look at any trends that we can kind of see happening. 
Um, I've, I've talked to Haley Wood before about, you know, what are the programs that seniors there are most interested in? And it really comes down to more recreational things, you know, arts programs, music, mm -hmm. uh, exercise. So those are what's captivating folks right now. We did have one art program not too long we ago. How was that? How was that? We, every seat was packed. Um, that oh, was really? phenomenal. I heard very good feedback about the instructor. Um, so she's going to come back. She's going to do a series of that. And then actually starting in July, well, June and July, we're going to do more arts and crafts type workshops. So we'll have uh, ceramics classes. We'll do macrame. We'll do tie dye t-shirts. Um, so that'll greatly expand come this summer. I and I think, so. and uh, Chad has a question. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, I've actually worked at three of the local senior centers um, mm -hmm. under the, um, I don't know what they call it now, SCSEEP uh, program. But anyway, um, the one with the biggest draw that I noticed, and it's, uh, it's a heavy lift, is mm -hmm. um, South Hadley. And one of the few that do not receive um, Highland Valley uh, meals in a steamer pan, they actually yep. make their own meals. Mm -hmm. There's a kitchen there and they cook and that sort of thing. And that is heavily attended simply because of the meal. And the sure. meal is good enough that it pulls in people from the community, not just seniors who come to the senior center, use the senior center, et cetera, mm -hmm. but people actually come off the street, drive up there, park there, and go in because of the food. Um, in my um, ideal um, the senior center of the 21st century, that's one piece. Uh, mm -hmm. At some point, I may write down these ideas and, and present them to you or ask to get on the agenda or whatever. But of all the, the senior centers I've traveled to around in this area, that one has the biggest attendance. Mm -hmm. And that's why, but you know, there's, Two chefs that are paid in there and uh, three volunteers. Um, they pack together the um, food that goes out to uh, Meals on Wheels. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a pretty efficient operation, uh, but that's that's a program. And yeah. Not not a small one, but it does have benefit. Oh no, absolutely, I agree. And um, you know, in Bernardston, when whenever we would do a home cooked meal, we could easily serve ninety to hundred people. Whereas on our traditional congregate lunch, that might be 35, 40 at the most. So people want home cooked. They don't really want the, the cafeteria style um, dining experience. Right. Okay, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to mention another program that was very successful, the hearing loss, living with mm -hmm. hearing loss program. Um, there were about 14 people in attendance, which I think was almost the limit of what we could mm -hmm. accommodate and um there were four students that gave a presentation they were excellent very clear very knowledgeable it seemed to me like they were ready to go out in, in the field and practice mm -hmm. um and the audience was very engaged a lot of good questions mm -hmm. were answered and i'm hoping that we can repeat that program again because i yes. think it would be popular Yes, and actually we will be. Um, we're going to be doing, this is uh, from Florence. There's an organization in Florence that um, has their own audiology department, and we're going to have them come in not only to do a presentation, but they'll also be providing hearing aid cleaning mm -hmm. um, once a quarter. So that but that won't start until July, uh, but that's certainly something that I, I really wanted to get, see us have at the Senior Center. Yeah, very good. What occurs to me also, um, I have, a, I have visited some time ago, the senior center in Springfield. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about diversity, I know that it's going to be very different because it's an urban center mm -hmm. uh, because the population um, is, the demographics are different. However, I think that, or I should say at the same time, I think that uh, some insight could be gained mm -hmm. from visiting and picking up some pointers there as well. Oh yeah, yep, so I would love to go there. I also really wanna see the Holyoke Senior Center, not only for their building, but to kind of get a sense yeah. of how do these larger places operate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and several people have suggested to me the South Hadley Senior Center. Mm -hmm. So we'll definitely have to make that a, a visit. 
So. I wonder if Jacqueline would be willing to write down just uh, not even sentences, but bulleted points about what uh, what you saw there that um, made you speak up now. Is that something you'd be willing to do? To, to it's been a while, so I I'll mm -hmm. try to be fair. I I did not take a tour. I visited uh, because there was an event and had a very very brief visit. Um, but I would be willing to team with somebody and we go down for a more serious visit. Well, I, I was thinking I don't want to lose what you saw. Um, if you're willing to put down, I don't know, just bulleted points or something that we could hang on to, whether it's not entered into any record or anything, but you spoke up for some reason. I think you have some pictures in your mind. I'd love to have uh, access to them. To be fair, I need to revisit because it's okay. been more than several, several years ago, mm. right? And in fact, I think what? it was a grand opening. Okay. They were naming it for um, ah, the representative yeah. who died here recently. Mm -hmm. I went to the old one, so yeah, I don't yeah, know the movie. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, you know, the Friends of the Emmer Senior Center has been are planning to visit several senior centers um, in the area and gather statistics and um, information. Yeah, yeah, that's and I didn't do that. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. wondering if our uh, council members would be interested in joining them. Yeah, they mm -hmm. do that. So I'll, I'll yeah. let you know when when that happens. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm more interested in getting impressions from one of our members who's a person of color. I, I don't need to have statistics in that book sort of thing. I'm just looking for uh, what eases comfort, what is exciting to enter a building about, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Because I want, if we ever do build a place, I want ours to be like that. Yeah. What was the program that you went to? Do you remember? It was it was the grand opening um, oh, okay. being named for <laughs> Raymond Center. Say it again. Raymond. It was Ray's. Yeah, Ray's. Mm. It named for Ray. Who, mm. who was Mr. Raymond? Uh, he was a representative from Springfield when I was in, back when I was here in 78. And I don't know, he continued to be a member of the center, uh, 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 of the uh, legislature. And he died a few months ago. Mm -hmm. okay. It's still very active. Ray Jordan. It oh, it's called the, the Ray, Jordan Center? Ray Jordan Center. Oh, okay. I yeah. Thought, I thought it was the Raymond Center. Thank you. Yeah, his name is Raymond Jordan. So you were you were close. You weren't too far off. Mm -hmm. And I was having uh, I was having a moment that I've earned with my age <laughs> 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 and, and the, his full name wasn't coming to me. <laughs> okay, um, unless there's more to say about that topic. Um, I wonder, Haley, do you wanna say something about the Age Dementia Friendly yes. Project? And Chad, you may have something to add too, please raise your hand if you do. Yeah, I can um, say that we've had over 830 surveys. I think it's, I think it might be even over 860 now. Um, so quite a, a big outpouring of support for this project. Certainly we, we have done more sur completed surveys than other towns, um, which is fantastic. We're going to be gathering that data and, you know, looking at trends, um, doing our analysis uh, in the coming weeks. And I do want to make a plug that on the second Saturday of each month, so starting in May, so this Saturday, um, I'll be at the farmer's market tabling to promote the listening sessions. Um, so for folks who whether or not you've completed the survey, we want you in attendance. We want to hear directly, uh, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, what are the things that are the most important to you about the following topics? So we have sessions on housing, social participation, transportation, public safety, and then we'll be doing a fifth session uh, for Spanish speakers, and that'll encompass all of the topics. And that will be um, sometime in September. The, the date is uh, hasn't been finalized yet. 
but I'm, I'm hoping that we'll have a pretty robust attendance. Um, our first meeting will be May 24th at 2.30, and that's actually on Zoom, but the uh, subsequent listening sessions will all be in person at the Bain Center. Mm -hmm. um, so please again, tell, tell all your friends. Um, and I, I think it's very good to have the Spanish. There's a uh, critical mass population well, it's on the outskirts of Amherst mm -hmm. of Asian families and mm -hmm. Asian communities. And I wonder if we might be able to delve into that as well. Do you have contacts? Indirectly. Mm. Well, we have some surveys in Chinese and Korean. Okay, but not Thai? Nope, no Southeast Asian dialects. Okay. No. Okay. There is a way for them to um, fill it out though if they get online there's um, uh, language appropriate uh, surveys for them there but they need to go to the library or get on a computer somewhere mm -hmm. i'll mention it to the person i had spoken to she's an anglo woman mm -hmm. who had worked with the um peace pagoda i uh, i had met her i believe on the the uh, pilgrimage everyone counts yeah, Elaine Kenseth Abel was her name at the time. Elaine Kenseth found her dad used to pastor the church in South Amherst, the Congregational Church in South Amherst. Do you have the URL for the uh, survey? Um, I can send it out. You can also go to the Engage Amherst page um, and just look at the uh, community, age and dementia friendly community, and then you'll see all the different survey links that we have. Is that something you're willing to do for this one person? To send the link if I if I have their email, if someone can provide me with yeah, that. Yeah, I, 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 I don't have it, but I can get it. Okay. We usually talk on the phone or in person. Okay, yeah. I mean, I can definitely send them the link. Just, just let me know um, okay. where to send it. Okay. Haley, did you, did you want to say anything about a letter writing campaign? Yes, I before would. We, uh, before we go on, I just wanted to add, I'm sorry to interrupt, that um, I have secured, for those four who aren't familiar with the, the survey, um, it's a, simply a, um, um, li the, the data that we will receive is just a listing of how many people answered what way on each individual question. Um, there's uh, survey research uh, allows a much deeper dive to answer um, more probing questions. For instance, uh, you could take question five and tabulate it with question six, and it could answer, a qu let's say the two questions were, uh, do you feel that you're safe in Amherst? Um, and um, let's say again, it's, it's uh, African-American. Um, we could put those two together uh, and uh, with the program, I'm going the, the long circle around, but I have secured somebody um, PhD level with SPSS, which is a statistical package for the social sciences that can do these um, statistical analysis um, to, 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 to get to a little deeper, um, deeper question. Um, my little thing about uh, having the information, uh, just did, as Jan Dizzard did, um, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, uh, a survey that developed the seniors uh, COA strategic plan for the next two, three years. I think um, getting some data that really um, tells us what's going on in terms of needs, preferences, uh, and wishes of the elderly in this town can really you know, if we got no money and we're only advocates, it's going to help us to say, well, what the heck do we advocate for? <laughs> you know, I'm somebody who goes by my own anecdotal um, information. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. research based. I think we ought to have a senior center. <laughs> and I feel very strongly about that. Period. But what does the population, I'm just like a select person or a town council, what do the people of this town want or need? Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to fulfill. And I think if we use this, we're, we're going to be able to get a little deeper into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, so a letter writing campaign. I think this kind of dovetails off of what Chad was just talking about. We really want to hear directly from people in Amherst, seniors in Amherst. What do you like about the Senior Center? What is not meeting your needs? How can we be better? Um, we want something that we can take to the town council and say, this is what people are actually telling us. You know, someone may come by the Senior Center and make an offhand comment, but if we had a letter from a senior, you know, that's something we can put up on a poster and stand on a street corner and say, people are advocating for this and we're not offering it and how can we do better? Um, so I would be very much interested if the council can draft a letter that we could put in the next newsletter um, and encourage people to start writing those and start reaching out, um, you know, to directly to the senior center or to their counselor, um, but just really getting their voices out there. Um, we really, we want to be encouraging that as soon as possible. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Is anybody here willing to take that on? I'm not clear on what it is. I mean, um, I, I know would... that you can have sandwich boards we call infographics that um, you can put up around and about with people's smiling faces and their quotes and that sort of thing that uh, stirs the grassroots of population mm -hmm. up and towards a certain issue. Um, I would need to hear more about what the purpose is and, and so it would be a letter written from the Council on Aging to the seniors in Amherst that would be featured in our next newsletter and it would be asking them to start writing letters start being vocal about what it is that they want because they I think they've all told us independently you know we need a new senior center we need more parking we need better lighting but we need that to, to be formalized we need that in a letter to their counselors um, so I would very much like the, someone on the council to write that letter, give that to me by the end of May so that I can put that into our next newsletter and really start promoting this. Well, would you um, um, make it a little easier for them and, and have a um, um, sample letter? Um, would you have the counselors uh, emails to send them to that sort of thing? You know, we could, we could certainly do that. Um, you know, uh, whoever on the council would like to step forward and do this task, I would definitely say some things that you can put into that letter would be reminding people that they're taxpayers and many people have lived in Amherst for 20 or more years. That's a lot of tax dollars that they've contributed to the town and it doesn't seem like they're getting a lot of benefit from that. Um, so certainly that's worth reminding people. It's also worth reminding them, um, you know, like you're saying, Chad, to, you know, who is your counselor to reach out to, um, you know, kind of give them a frame of reference, you know, what are you frustrated by? And I would list a few things. Mm -hmm. Parking for sure is one. Um, we, we know the lighting is not very good at the Bang Center. Um, so that can help jog their memory um, in terms of what to start writing about. And these letters that you asked are, would be requesting of people to mm -hmm. write. Um, would you want them sent sent to the Gazette? Would you want to post um, them? In I would like them sent to the Senior Center. That way I can make copies if we need to and I can, you know, just make sure that they're they're in a safe place okay. and then we can distribute however we feel is necessary. Okay, and maybe we should all take a stab at writing a letter and send our, our letter for the, for the newsletter to Haley and let her, you know, come mm -hmm. by what we all have to say. Yeah, because I think everyone here has offered some really great insights. Sure. Um, so, you know, definitely give me some ideas. And I, like I said, I would love to get that in as soon as possible. We've had a great presence um, with some letters to the editors. Let's keep that momentum going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I thought the le last letter that went in the paper asked some of those mm -hmm. questions. Absolutely. What does the senior center mean to you? Mm -hmm. And um, if people write that and let us know, that would be very helpful. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, like we, there was a call to action right in that um, that letter to the editor. Let's do another. I've you know, people need several calls to action. You know, it's it's really not sufficient to just say something one time. So if we really repeat that we want this, we want them to be engaged. Eventually, people are going to take that ball and run with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, that's something that also could happen at a table at the farmer's mm -hmm. market is to get feedback from people. Yes, definitely. Yes. definitely. Yes, yes, yes. Could be very helpful. Oh, I would love to do that as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else on that topic? Well, not on the letter Dad, writing. I have a question. Um, I think I'm going to be my regular contrarian self <laughs> and say now we have three different strategic directions, five, uh, whatever it might be, um, that if there's some way that we can have a round table and uh, yeah. organize it and say, what are we going to put the little tiny bit of effort? What is it? Nine people? <laughs> nine mm -hmm. here and some on the friends. Uh, what are we going to put our consolidated effort into um, in an organized fashion so that we might accomplish something? Just a thought, just a stray thought. Um, mm -hmm. It comes from my organization development and community development hat <laughs> um, that you know we do this um, in a um, effective, efficient way so that we have some power. There's another. I'm sorry. Go go ahead. No, no. I, I, I think that that will elicit, could elicit responses from people who might not respond to the written survey. Mm -hmm. And it's a good way. That's, in fact, that's one of the things that um, Elaine and I had talked about uh, when the, right before the survey went out, mm -hmm. she said that it would probably be better to talk with the people mm -hmm. and you'll get more because it's a very lengthy survey instrument. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was saying, you're more inclined to get that verbal response. Mm -hmm. and, and not to say that, you know, people who have been silenced for long periods of time may not be as quick on first attempt to put that information out, but they just might surprise us and be bold enough to do what it is is necessary to be done for them to get what it is they desire. Mm -hmm. So that round table idea, um, panel, whatever you want to call it, I think communities re refer more to them as panels. Mm -hmm. No, I meant oh. us, yeah. us nine people. What are we going to do? Oh, okay. Okay. But I also think the, that model the, could work for the community people. Definitely. It's going to happen this summer in those five um, public sessions. Yes. It will, but, you know, I think it's worth keeping in mind that those sessions aren't really about, they're about senior services, but it's not really truly about the bank center. Um, you know, maybe one thing we could look at is holding our own evening listening sessions for people who want to come and make comments about the bank center. You know, I'm, I'm certainly happy to do that on a weeknight. You know, if that if that's what gets people in the door and really helps them to start thinking about, you know, oh, geez, you know, this space isn't what I want. And we, again, we're taxpayers. We really deserve yeah. a little bit better treatment yeah. here. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. I think yeah. that we, we could have our own listening mm -hmm. session. I yeah, can. very good yeah. idea. And in fact, we might have to do that. And okay. I'm I'm pretty sure that's what Hadley did, is they gathered people and heard what what people wanted and needed. Exactly. So I would really like to see like a multi-pronged approach, right? If we table at the farmer's market, if we encourage people to write letters, if we have our own listening sessions, then we've given them three different opportunities to make their voices heard. We are, we're making sure that they know we are committed to this. Um, so I'd like to see us do it all, yeah. you know, and I, that, that takes a lot of effort, but I, I know there are volunteers in this group and the friends that we can pull in to, to make that happen. Do you think that can happen simultaneous with the listening sessions that we're doing with the ADF? I do. I do think that. I think there are enough people who, if we give them the avenue, they would come. Mm -hmm. They'd come to both. And especially if we do it in the evening, I don't expect people to be able to come during a, a you know a work day. Maybe mm -hmm. they, they don't drive or they can't have a family member take them or whatever it might be. I think if we do our own evening session, mm -hmm. people will come. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Anything else on that topic? Haley, you mentioned at one point that there might be a possibility for a van. There is. There will be. <laughs> um, I actually just had a meeting with the PVTA this morning and we will be getting a van. We're so thrilled. Um, you know, it does have 100,000 miles on it, but those vans are pretty well maintained. Um, so we'll have to, you know, work out a budget um, probably with the friends group on how we'll do the maintenance for that. Um, and then I'm going to work with um, the town manager. I'd like to make some changes to my ARPA plans um, and hire somebody with like a CDL license, you know, instead of looking for the minivans. Um, but it will come. They're going to send me different models next week. So we get a sense of what would be the best fit. Uh, I'm thinking probably a 12 seat van. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a little easier to find drivers for a 12 seat versus a 14 seat van, sure. um, but we will have it. And that's a wonderful thing. Uh, we'll have to think about where we're going to store it and park it. Um, but I think that's, it's very much worth it. You know, if we have an evening listening session, we can take 12 people in the van and drop them off and pick them oh, up. Um, so wow. that way people will have a ready-made. And I see Mindy has a question and she <laughs> helped me with the van. So I have to give her the floor for a minute. <laughs> Thank you, Haley. Mm -hmm. I, you, did it, you did it. I just, I just echoed it and I repeated support and encouragement to PVTA, mostly based on our shared Amherst Survival Center experience and knowing that they sometimes make these older used vans available instead of doing bus routes. So mm -hmm. maybe they would make one available. Um, and I know that you needed it because receiving a used older van is a lot cheaper than mm -hmm. buying a brand new van according to the Absolutely. requirements. So I just wanted to say bravo. I'm so excited that it's happened and that it's come through. Um, mm -hmm. And it also relieves sort of a need to raise money for that purpose so we can focus on other things, which is great. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank That's you. Great. Well, thank you for the help. Thank you for your help. Yes. I'm looking forward to seeing it in action. Let That's me right. know <laughs> what other support I can be with PVTA or otherwise. Of course. Um, oh, absolutely. Thank you. No problem. Um, the other update from PVTA is unfortunately, it will not work for this fiscal year. But in FY24, we can work with them on applying for a grant to do a dial a ride program. Um, so it's basically a version of microtransit. So if you're not familiar with that, someone would call the senior center, we can schedule them a ride, um, you know, take them where they need to go, and we can reimburse up to 50% of the cost to PVTA. So we, it would be a really nice situation for us where we can then, you know, have a, a way to pay for half of the salary, the maintenance, the gas, the insurance um, on a van. Uh, the deadline is coming up too quickly to really make a cohesive plan this fiscal year. But again, FY24, um, they're they're very much willing to go in with us on that grant application. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, good work. <laughs> very good. They who is willing to go in? Uh, the PVTA, the Pioneer Valley oh, Transit. Is there any way to get support from uh, the town? I mean, the, you, you've you've um, searched around and came up with the vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if the town would help in the maintenance, both of transportation and of the vehicle itself, it's just a little. The timing is not great. We're right in the middle of budget season, so they already have their numbers, and I haven't had a chance to present. This is how much it'll cost on our end. I think in Hadley, it costs them about fifteen thousand dollars a year. So there's some some details to work out before I can go to the town and say, you know, we'd really like to include this in our next budget. Um, so I still have to do some research. But I think you know, if we make a solid enough plan, I do hope that the town will step in and help with some of those costs so that it's not entirely being funded by yeah, yeah. donations. Yeah, soft money, we would call it. And, and even line item. Him. Go ahead. Even though you have a budget hearing coming up on the seventeenth, you do, but you things can. are mostly set. Oh, um, okay. So it, it's a little too late in the process to make a, such a large change, um, unfortunately, for this fiscal year. Go ahead, Chad. Yeah, I um, think I saw you at the uh, Pioneer Valley Age Dementia Friendly uh, Quarterly Meeting. Yep. I wonder if Orange or who, whoever those uh, folks are over there could provide the budget, uh, you know, some estimates that you could present to the town because 
I can see it parked in the town garage. I can see the town um, mechanics um, maintain it. Uh, we'd have to put gas and oil and different kinds of things mm -hmm. like that in it. But if you, if, if, um, what did they call it? Mini something or the other? Over there? Uh, micro transit. Micro transit could have some numbers for you. They could. Um, I know. So Hadley has their own micro transit or dial a ride program through PVTAs, as does Northampton. So we have some closer neighbors who could, you know, give us an estimate. It, it, it's a little hard to say, you know, with our large student population, you know, what would it look like for us? Um, but yeah, I plan to reach out to them and, and see what their costs are for that program. Okay, moving on. Um, I just want to mention that um, if you recall, I had sent a um, letter to my town councilor, Shalining, and uh, Balmill, and she had responded and what she, I expressed their need for better space, better budget, better. Um, <laughs> program as so we could do better programming at the senior center and she um, responded came and did a tour of the senior center saw what our needs were and uh, we have since had a meeting with Dorothy Pam who also is on the town services outreach committee and she listened to our needs as well and is quite interested in helping us so on May 19th, Haley and myself will be on the agenda for the Town Services Outreach Committee. And we will present in more detail what we feel we need mm -hmm. from the town and, uh, and to improve our senior center services. And that meeting will be at 6.30 p.m. I will send out a notice when it gets posted on the town website, anybody can listen in. And there probably is also space for public comment at the beginning of that meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you're so interested, I will send an announcement of when we are about to do that. Haley, did you wanna add anything more? I think that's pretty all encompassing. Uh, we'll give a slideshow presentation, you know, looking at what are the service statistics for Amherst versus some of our neighbors. Um, that document that you sent around Rosemary is quite striking when you look at how much towns are paying per senior, yeah. you know, yeah. what is the size of their space. Yes. Um, yes. So we, we want to give them some numbers that are going to stick with them. And actually, I had some um, conversations with people at the open house, some of the counselors, Pat Rooney came along and introduced herself and uh, Anika Lopes came and introduced herself. And um, I think we have some support. We know that Dorothy Pam is behind us. We know that Shawning is behind us and um, there probably are others. So uh, it's, it's looking good. And we have, just have to keep working at it. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda, I wanted to ask people if uh, we had Jennifer Moisten come and give a presentation last month at our Council on Aging meeting on her diversity and inclusion workshop. And i um, wondering if uh, members of the board would be interested in scheduling um, a workshop with her for a July meeting, for instance. Uh, it spoke, Chad um, spoke highly of um, the program when he attended it, felt it was one of the better programs that he's been to on diversity and inclusion. I think we could all benefit from such a workshop. I'd like to know how people feel about that. Um, Chad, you have your hand up. Go ahead, Chad. I think we've got a lot of work to do. We're a new board. We have a new director. Um, we don't have a strategic plan. Um, 
we've not done a lot of work together to get to know one another and see what our strengths and weaknesses are. Um, I'd like to not take up board meeting time with this. I think it's highly needed and so on, but I think, um, you know, the nine months, or let's see, winter plus, uh, it seems like a year and a half maybe that I've been hanging around. We've had, um, you know, presentations and um, all sorts of things that really don't have to do with the work of the board. Um, setting policy, forming teams, uh, getting subcommittees to work between meetings. Uh, that's, that's what I envision. Um, so I think we could benefit from that. Um, you know, the, the, I guess what is our team? Half of our team is white skin privilege. So those folks could, um, but that's my thoughts anyway. Okay. I, I agree. I agree. Um, and I think that a one time activity for all the work that needs to be done, that is being called to be done. Um, I think it's more than a one shot deal. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how do you incorporate it into the life and work of those who, who spend time one way or the other connecting to the center um, and the council. And I agree too, as an African-American woman who started doing, um, quote, diversity work back before 1978. And the work is mostly white centered and it's okay for that work to continue um, because, to be quite honest, there's a point at which there's an intersection, but there's work to be done by each group of people. Um, and I'm not sure that that we are, and, and this is just my opinion, that we as a we are at the point of doing the we work. I think that um, what you may not have been saying directly, but indirectly, uh, I was picking up, there's work for white people to do with white people. And the, the whole tenor changes when you bring in underrepresented people. I can't tell you what you need to do. As a black person, I can't tell you. As a white person, I say there's work to be done. Um, and I, I learned it a little bit the hard way. It wasn't just the 30 years I, I, I spent doing diversity work of one kind or another. Uh, but my first year at UMass and my background was human relations with, a, with a, an emphasis on race relations. I did my dissertation on that. Um, and, and so I was used to becoming part of, of any group that had to do with diversity. And um, that first year that I was at UMass, there was a weekend retreat and I signed up for it along with other members of our, our division. And I was quietly told, highly insulted, that this was a white exploration group. And I said, how can you do race relations without me there? I was the only black person. And, and the, the woman said, we don't want you to take responsibility for work that we need to do. Mm. And I later understood, it took me a while, but I later understood what she was saying. Exactly. We've both been hurt by racism. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and and black people have internalized some of the racist ideologies and that's where i see my work needing to be done yeah. and the dynamics change when we are sitting in that one space it's not like can we all just get along and we're at a point where we can get along we need to do work to to, to create that space like the venn diagram that overlaps i don't know if in math uh you might recall that but there's a point of intersection and at that point of intersection is where we do the deep work deeper work has been done before we get to that point so that it's not having somebody flog white people or gloss over something that affects white people, a place where they can grow, but a place where they can bring something to the table while black people have been working on their internalization of racism. Then we can be authentically who we are. Mm -hmm. okay. And no apologies, but just being open to grow. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah. I think that um, it's true what Chad says also about the council. We have many new members. We don't know each other. Um, and uh, we need strong leadership. Next yeah. month, we get to start meeting in person. Mm -hmm. That's right. Is that true? In June? I thought you said in um, July. I thought that the, the town council was holding off until July, but I'll check with Angela tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That would be nice if we could meet in person in June. It would be great. Yeah, um, I, I would definitely love to see people, you know, at the center together, you know, I, to everyone's point, you can't really know how we work best as a team if, we, if we're, we're so fragmented, right? And I think there are some people here who I've, I don't even know, Mila, if I've met you in person yet. Um, so, so how can we be an effective team, right? If I, if I don't have that connection with you. Um, so that's a, that's a really good point. And there's a lot of, um, you know, things to consider here as we move forward as a council. Okay, welcome, Mila. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sorry I'm late. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Here. A point, if I could um, just take a second of our time to speak to Mila, and that is that I did get the uh, statistician, um, the PhD in uh, social research and health uh, at uh, UMass, has agreed to uh, work with us on SPSS, the statistical package for the social scientists. So um, the only reason I want to bring you up to date with that is because you were one of three or four people who said, gee, um, you know, some cross tabs here would be pretty nice. Um, so I want you to start thinking of some questions that, uh, you know, we're going to get spreadsheets with just raw data. Question one, five people said this. Question two, 20 said that. Um, start start maybe thinking of um, questions we can submit to her. Um, she's a South Korean and she's a PhD at UMass. Okay. With the rest of the group, they're talking about the H dementia friendly survey statistics. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go back. And actually, Jacqueline, that was a seg into the next topic on the, that's what I was thinking <laughs> on the agenda about council on aging leadership. Yes. Uh, we come before the council today with a matter of urgency. And it's an urgency because it's about the leadership, the ending leadership terms for the current co-leaders. Last year, was it, year before, uh, Rosemary Koffler, Pat Rector, and I uh, started a new, uh, we employed a new approach to leadership in part because uh, 
one of the things that our experiences have shown us is that people tend to shy away from either membership and definitely leadership when they feel that uh, the burden of proof is going to be on one person. So they're a lot more reluctant to volunteer. And what we're looking for is somebody to volunteer so that there is not a gap in leadership when the terms of uh, that both Rosemary and I have. Pat had to move on uh, because she literally relocated. Um, and we found it a very helpful approach because each one of us brought special skills. Um, and, 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 and we think that it benefits our coming together as a tri, what did we call it, Rosemary? A, a, a triumvirate. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sort of um, a funny term. But <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked so much better because each one of us brought something very, very special. Um, so during, during the time of the co-leadership, one <clears throat> member of our leadership team as I said, uh, I had to relocate. And we think it's such a practical model as we enter into this next year, uh, the next council year, when we will, uh, I, we're, 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 I think I'm supposed to be leaving late spring, early summer. Uh, I really haven't kept up with it. But um, both of us are rotating off of the leadership team and would, would invite, and I don't want to say desperately so, but that is the truth, <laughs> invite some, uh, at least a couple of people to volunteer and to know that you're, you're volunteering to serve two at a time will certainly increase the likelihood that somebody will step forth. So do I get an amen to that? <laughs> silence gives consent, eh? No, no, no. I, my <laughs> silence is not consent. My silence is just the opposite. <laughs> I think it's a legalized way to have a closed meeting. <laughs> Say that again, Chad. Um, I've said it many times before. It's never been entered in the minutes. I, I see it as a legalized way to have a closed meeting. What, what's a legalized way? The triumvirate. Well, the I, I, in the I, bylaws to me. Okay, you go ahead. A consolidation of power, the opposite of what we were trying to do, which was expand out, include, make it more inclusive, get more people involved. Um, it went in the opposite direction to me, but. Again, I'm, I'm usually uh, the contrarian, so. I hear what you're saying, Chad. However, when we talk about doing the planning for the meeting, uh, meeting with Haley or the director of the center, doing some of the grunt work, um, uh, fortunately, some of the organization. Uh, part of, yeah, I mean, Rosemary was, uh, a veteran at it. I was very, very new at the council, let alone in a leadership position on the council. And, you know, new people get picked quickly because the organization feels that they, they don't know what they're in for, but we're going to grab them right away while they're fresh. And, and it, gives, it, it gives a running chance to everybody. And when you know that if you're doing other things, which you'll find most often people who are doing the work that the member, members of, like the work that the members of the council are doing, are doing other things too. So it, it shows that we have a little bit of, of compassion and we're willing to share that energy with other people as well. It, it wasn't meant to consolidate power. That was it far does. from it our does because the bylaws were changed. Yeah, yeah, but that that was far from our intention. I wasn't going to take on the leadership uh, alone uh, because I was pretty fresh, um, and there were things that I really felt well enough about that I would be part of the council 
And when they asked about the leadership, I, I know there were still some gaps in what I did or did not do, but it made it so much easier to say yes when I knew I was going to be, I was not going to be learning in a, in, in a vacuum uh, about the organization or doing the work um, that in, in a vacuum but it made it so much easier to say yes. And Chad, how would you see it going forward, expanding the power rather than consolidating power? I feel- Well, that I believe it came from a suggestion I had um, about the roles. Um, this is a very long conversation. Um, I think uh, if you wanna hear a lot about it, we should put it on the agenda for some time. Um, I don't have today's agenda in front of me, so I don't know where we're at, whether we have time to go over this. But um, I think it's a pretty um, long conversation. I think it came from my saying um, that we could do anything we want as a board. Of course, it has to be legal, but we could do anything we want. We could continue with the president, a treasurer, or whatever those other roles were, um, and we could... Uh, change from meeting to meeting. Somebody is tired of uh, facilitating uh, the meeting, uh, you could pass it off to the secretary. Uh, but you don't change um, the bylaws and the titles of the positions. You um, have a team uh, as opposed to one person speak the whole meeting, um, the, you know, decide on the direction of the organization, um, allow people to get on the agenda or not. Um, it's a lot, there's a lot of uh, things packed into this. And I, I could talk about it for um, many hours, but I don't know if this is the time or place. Yeah. But Terry, did you have a question? Are you Terry? muted, Terry? Yes, you're you're muted, muted, Terry. Yeah, you're muted. Okay, go ahead. Are you, Terry? You're still muted. Yeah, her screen froze. Yeah, oh, she's actually okay. frozen now. Uh -huh. Okay. There we go. Hi. Hi. Hey. Oh yeah. You guys, it's all froze. You know, a little choppy. Chat along with that. Um, Somebody has to work with Haley on making out the agenda each time. Oh, and I couldn't hear anybody. I could. Oh. Mine wasn't. You guys are all frozen, but I'm not. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I couldn't that hear happens. Anything. Can you hear us now? Anything. Terry, if you can hear us, you might want to log off and then join the meeting again. Uh, I, I, think I don't think she hears you. I don't think so either. I'll try sending her an email. I, th I think it's very difficult. Chad. Is anybody else frozen? By mm -mm. It's you. It's your connection. It's just making us seem like we're frozen. I'm not frozen anymore. Jackie is. Yeah. Uh, you should um, log off and then rejoin the meeting, Terry. It'll probably fix your problem. Are you there? Terry? Yeah. Hmm. She does have trouble in her location. Hmm. What do we got, a half hour left? There are just some, well, probably about 20 minutes. It's just some technical things that just have to be dealt with. And if nobody steps up to the plate to deal with those, those organizational things, and um, then it's not going to happen. So pass them around. Don't overburden one person with that. Once, you know, what changes people is being involved, uh, doing action. We can't change them, change them by changing their thoughts. Their thoughts change by, by, their actions, it's the opposite of what most people think. So if you give somebody an assignment or they volunteer for an assignment, 
And, and if there's an expect, expectation for each of us that we put in five hours a week or five hours a month or whatever it is, um, you're going to spread, you're asking me how to spread out. Uh, I can life. hear Haley, but that's it. That's how to do it. So who makes the determination that it's your turn to, to be in charge for the meeting? We, we step up and all agree that we're going to uh, be a facilitator or we, we all say that we're going to take minutes or, you know, um, you put a two week or two month or two year um, um, expectation on uh, a role. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to do it. Have you seen an organization work that way? Yes, many. Uh, I do want to give Greg a, a chance to talk because he's had his hand up for a little while. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, Greg, your hand blends into the background. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm not sure where we're going with this item. Are we going to vote to, well, first of all, I want to thank everybody for all the hard work it seems that everybody's been, everybody's been doing. And, but that's one of the questions that I have about uh, this style of leadership. Uh, things are being done. They don't seem to be frozen, but I can't. Things are being done, and I'm not sure when and where and who are doing things. Uh, I'm not sure of how uh, deliberations is that decisions are being made outside of the committee meeting and whether if you have three individuals, which we did have, whether that was a violation of open meeting law. That's why I call it a closed like meeting. Uh, but I don't know what they were deciding. So I don't know if they were delivering, uh, you know, what was going on during the meeting. So, uh, that's all to say that I'm not sure what we're doing with this. Are we I just heard reelect another. Uh, heard Haley, and I'm not frozen, but I'll be frozen like in time. Like, okay, so so that's my question: is uh, what is the outcome of this agenda item? Is that a, an election to vote uh, and confirm the, the three person, the two person? Uh, we can't doing? hear anything. Yeah, yeah. What, what we're doing is putting out a call for action on the part of the members of the council because uh, both Rosemary and I know that we will be stepping down from the quote triumvirate leadership and we don't want things to just be um, in suspension and wondering who's going to decide the agenda. Um, and items, you know, the items for the agenda really gen are generated from the larger group, but we organize it, make sure that the, um, Rosemary especially, make sure that the reminder goes out to people, and we're not just wondering who's going to do it, who's going to step up to the plate. I don't know that either one of us would have any strong, I can't speak for Rosemary, I don't have any strong uh, reservations about rotating leadership as, as was described by Chad. I, I just sometimes in, in an effort to do good, we omit um, acknowledging the shortcomings to those and human mm -hmm. frailties tend to constitute the shortcomings. When somebody says, well, it's my week, I don't know, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that was, that's easier, that's easier enough for it to be done when there are three people, but especially when the time comes. And so people assemble, whether it's virtually or in person, and we don't know what the agenda is going to be. That's, those are all really excellent points. And if I can offer some perspective as someone who has worked with other councils and just as a director, you know, if we had a revolving door of who's doing the, the agenda this week, that, that's really difficult for my end. You know, it, it's very helpful to have a, a consistent leadership team and that can change on perhaps like a yearly basis, yeah. but to have that frequent rotation, that, that's hard for me to keep track of. And there's so much to do at the senior center already that it would be a big task to have to keep a calendar of, okay, this week it's Chad or this week it's Jacqueline. Um, 
And really the purpose of having a leadership team is just to work with the director on drafting the agenda. And that's really it. It's not, um, you know, I don't want to make it seem more mysterious than it is, but it's just me saying to Rosemary and Jacqueline, I'm working on getting a PVTA bus for the senior center. Can we add that to the agenda item? Um, mm -hmm. You know, that that's really what the leadership does. And then they take the burden off of the director to create that meeting, facilitate the meeting and get it posted on the town website. Um, you know, so so that's just my thought. You know, I think we should have a little bit more consistency in our leadership, and I would certainly benefit from that as a as a new director here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that too. Of course, that's the way I've always functioned, and it had worked well. And I want to comment about your um, what you said, Greg. And I see your hand is up again, but um, let me let me just say this first: um, a, a three three members in a leadership role is not a violation of open meeting law. There is only a violation of open meeting law if you are having a discussion with more, with, with a, 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 a quorum of the members. But well, setting, setting the agenda to me is what we will, will, will talk about. It's what the business of the organization is. That's the agenda. Currently, it's like getting on a train uh, when you're into the, when you have a board seat on this organization. It's like getting on the first stop on a train. You travel on the train down the tracks and you can get out at any station you want. Um, you can ride it to the end and get out at the end of your term. It's not like a car where you can be a, a participant that drives that car where the, um, people who are sitting in the car agree to go. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's a good analogy, but that's the way it seems to me after, I guess, a year and a half of trying to get, get on the agenda. Uh, Greg, do you want to go ahead with your comment? Uh, uh, I was just, uh, uh, again, wondering, uh, what was the purpose of the, the, the agenda item? Was it to we, you know, confirm or to reestablish the structure because we, we, we limited, we put a time uh, limit on how long we would try this structure. And I don't know whether you're saying that we come to the end of that time limit and we need to decide whether we're going to do it again and stay with the same structure and vote on that or I don't think we came uh, with the intention of voting, but to alerting the council that there will be no leadership, quote unquote, when both of us, um, I, I, I'm thinking that my, my um, tenure expires um, this summer. I have to, I have to confirm that. June 30th, uh, June 30th. Yeah, yeah. And so at least th there's that would, even that in and of itself will um, be a change because we've got, we will have gone from a three person team to a one person team. And then when are you leaving Rosemary? Uh, my term ends on the June 30th. I've been on the council for two terms. Okay. So, so I will, I will not be a member of the council any longer. Yeah, yeah. And, and certainly we didn't think about uh, when we were talking about letting the members know so that they could be thinking about where we go from here mm -hmm. in terms of who might step up to the plate to do uh, that kind of uh, agenda planning, the meeting with Haley, uh, where, you know, where that comes into play. Mm -hmm. Not to just, uh, is, uh, abandon, uh, abandon, yeah. and, and go away without giving you notice. Mm -hmm. Hindsight is twenty twenty. It, it seemed like a issue that got kind of jammed through. Um, it would have been great if um, those three had uh, rotating um, time periods, so there was always an older person or two on the board. Uh, when a new person got elected onto it. Um, I don't know if, if that's something to think about, but uh, am I making myself clear? You don't yeah. re-elect all three all, all at once all the time, just one or two. 
Well, it, it, it I, I hear what you're saying, Chad, um, but I don't know that we had expected things to happen the way they're happening. One, um, it was just the physical relocation. And the other, um, I, I don't know if we talked about the term before people serve and if there's a term limit. Uh, we, I don't think we thought about that. We just thought about stepping up to the plate and being able and, and I'm not going to say you're, 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 you don't have a point, um, stepping up to the plate so that we can see the work that needs to be done, be done. Okay. And may I remind you that we did have a number of vacancies on the council for a number of months. And those vacancies were recently filled. We have four new members who have been on the council only a few months, brand new members. So it's very difficult to um, ask them to be in a leadership role. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course it's ideal if you have someone longstanding to work with a new member in a leadership position, but we don't have that option. Um, the standing members that we have now are Chad, Mila, and Greg. Once Jacqueline and I leave. So I don't think you're, you're um, I don't know how that works into your thinking, Chad, but that's where we're at. It's just a different leadership model, that's all. Yeah, yeah. So that means that we have um, June 30th, we have until the next meeting to think about uh, internally where, where we go from here with this. Mm -hmm. um, and giving you advance notice by bringing it to the table and on the agenda, we felt would be quite fitting and proper. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Anything? Any other comments on this topic? I just want to remind people. Um, oh, Haley, uh, Christina was working with you on the CDBG um, yes. application. That has that come through yet? No, they haven't even released the RFP yet. And I think initially we had talked about um, doing a van, but since we're gonna get one from PVTA, uh, we won't necessarily need to apply for CDBG funding for that. I would still like to see us apply. You know, I was um, met a couple of people at the open house yesterday who their spouses are in the early stages of dementia. And we really don't have a lot of programs or activities for those people. Um, so something like a memory cafe would be an excellent way of meeting that need. Um, so, you know, again, I, I just have to see what the grant is requiring of us uh, for the application process. And then I uh, plan to proceed with that. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. And actually any one of us can also go to the Engage Amherst and right. enter what we would like to see uh, that money spent for. And one of my thoughts was to better equip our rooms for those with hearing mm. issues. Yes, that's another great, great thought. So I, I did enter that on there, but it um, doesn't hurt for others to do the same thing if they feel the need. Mm. Yeah. Chad, did you have a question? Yeah, just earmarked money for exercise equipment. I don't know if Haley would say... Um, we need you to carve us out some space uh, at Banks for that. I I just don't know how we could apply for that. You know, okay. I, I where would they put the building space? You know, are we talking about renovating or remodeling? I think if we if we are looking in that vein, then we've we've kind of gone beyond what the CDBG can fund. Um, I can give the update that we are making steady progress on purchasing. The town signed a contract to buy the exercise equipment from a vendor. So we will be having that delivered to us 
um, you know, with, with shipping delays, it's hard to say now, but we are on track to spend those funds by the end of the fiscal year. And then the, the challenge, of course, will be where do we store them and when can we implement them at the senior center? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. All right. I would like to get approval for the minutes of the April 14th meeting. Every, I hope everyone had a chance to look over them carefully. And um, if you have any questions or comments, now is the time to say so. Otherwise, I'd like a um, motion to approve the minutes. And I make the motion. A second. Can someone second? I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Raise your hand. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, the minutes stand approved. And uh, Linda Terry apparently was not able to be here today, talk about new programs, but um, we will bypass that for now. Our next meeting at this point is scheduled to be June 9th, and it could also be June 16th, if that is a better date for people. Any comment about that? Then we'll leave it at June 9th at 5 p.m. And the meeting is adjourned, Six. Uh, Chad, yes, go ahead. Oh, bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, I do bye, have bye. a question, though. Sure. Yes. Uh, move the Did meeting because this was going to be a Zoom meeting or meeting uh, in person. Remember, you, you were talking about June, July? Yeah. This is going to be a Zoom meeting in June. I don't know. We'll have to let you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, I, I will send out an email about that. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye Everybody. now. Bye. Bye. Bye.